Ryder? You there? I'm up here. Upstairs. Oh, great. I thought you left. Hey, the ice worked. My ankle looks brand spanking new. Yeah, you heal quickly. Always have. By the way, thanks for the blanket. Oh, it was the least I could do. Didn't want you to freeze to death. Not possible. I never die. <sighs> Besides, I usually warm up fast. <sighs> Have you eaten? I'm hungry. Should I come down and make you something? Something? My fave. Is it any good? No. God-awful, to be honest. Hmm. That sounds yummy. But I'll just make something myself, if you don't mind. Someone looks pleased. Am I interrupting a special moment? Huh? Porn? Something? Porn. It's something... I'm writing. So the writer writes. What do you write, writer? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Hmm. Here, maybe this will get you talking. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. <laughs> A toast? May I ask where you carried this from? Your kitchen. It was just sitting out. Huh. I thought you knew about wine. Are you doubting me? I'm offended. Convince me. Hmm. Full-bodied with a deep ruby hue, hints of red currants. Mmm, floral notes. Sweet tannins, thoroughly integrated acidity, persistent aftertaste. Hmm, red? I'm sold. A toast to you.
Anything else you want to know? Ask. You have until I finish my glass. The riskier the question, the bigger the sip. I'm not about to ask you the classic uh, work or study question, but uh, do you work or study? Neither. I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh. Hmm. Short sip. I hope this doesn't count too much against me, but, uh, how old are you? <laughs> Twenty-three. Half your age. Ah, uh, do I look that old? I'm not answering that one. Medium sip. All right, you've got one more. Make it count. You sleeping at a motel? Do you want me to find myself one? That's not what I said. Words. So, here's where you find yours, writer. Wolf, Bierce, Plath, Poe, a host of tragic deaths. Should I be scared? My favorite one's missing. The son of the Black Corsair. Emilio Salgari, right? Mm-hmm. How did he die? Uh, suicide. I should be scared. Hey, look! One who's alive. I'm saved. Do you like Ed Miller? Ed Miller? What an idiot. Yeah, sounds about right. You know what? Me and that guy have history. Huh. So, what kind of history? The bad kind. Oh. Hmm. Wait, say no more. He stole your wine. <laughs> I wouldn't have let him. I was about 13? I was obsessed with this book. Well, the cheapo edition. I heard he was doing a book signing at Rossmore Books. I pretended I was sick to skip school, but my parents didn't buy it. I tried to leave during recess and got caught. After school, I ran so fast that one of my heels broke and I twisted my ankle. But I made it. I got in line and waited and waited. And when there were only three people left in front of me, this old guy showed up, his editor, I think. White hair, white suit. You still here? What about the radio interview? And he took him away. The end. I never even saw his face. 
Getting grounded felt worse than the ankle, but not nearly as bad as the letdown. Anywho, 13 years old. Did you really never see his face? He was looking down at the books the whole time. Plus, people were in the way. And you've never seen a picture of him? Online, in the newspapers? Maybe, but I don't remember. Turn it over. Yes! No! No? Of course! The first thing you told me was you were a writer. I, I have to see this with my own... Oh! Petronius, what did I tell you, huh? Sorry, your, your uncle. It, it's fine, it's fine. I think he doesn't like me, is all. He doesn't like any girl. He's quite possessive. Oh, so do you get a lot of lady callers? Nobody comes here, except for my neighbor, Samuel Franklin. Oh, should I lock the door and turn off the lights? Or would you rather I get another glass? Anyway... Uh, I'm 23 now. I'll never learn. Do you remember the song that Buster sings at the end of the book? I wrote it. Did you write the music? It's a novel. You can't hear it. I could. What? What? No. <laughs> no. Sing it. No way. Sing it. No, no. Please sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Hey, you know you owe me after something. The itch in me hates all that I am. The bitch in you hates all that you are. But when we are together, Hate each other twice as much That's the reason why we will never part Which goes to show just how bitchy we are I never meant to cause you any harm Cause darling you need no help with that But it's so fucking funny To see how you destroy your life Or in your case To see how I wreck mine What a waste it'd be if we didn't team up which goes to show just how bitchy we are.
And then... Um... I don't think I need to go into detail about what happened. They're your memories. You decide. Okay. Um... No. I'd rather not feed your morbid curiosity. But there's something I do want to know. Do you remember the date? I don't even know today's date. Our brain gathers much more information than we think. Look here. No, no, no. You want to hypnotize me? Please. <laughs> I thought Robert would hire a real professional. The more you hamper my work, the longer it's going to take me to leave. <laughs> so let's go back to that day. You wrote a novel a while back, but you've been suffering writer's block for years. You look through your office window, leaves dance in the wind, birds sing up in the sky. There's a mug in your hands, a warm feeling, a comforting scent. You look at a flock of birds and suddenly, an idea. Your cat interrupts you, begging for food. And when you go feed it, There's someone at the door. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> mm. Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. All right. You mentioned a certain Samuel. He lives a five-minute drive away, across the forest, with his wife.
Where did you get him? From Aunt Claire, shortly after moving here. So you don't get lonely. Which is exactly what you were looking for. <laughs> Why haven't I seen him around the house? He'll go missing. When? I don't know yet. Have you had other pets? I didn't even want pet. But... I couldn't say no. You call your cat Pet? It's short for Petronius. And does he like ginger ale? Like the one in the door into summer? I read too. Do you like to drink? Wine. Never on my own. Why? People like me better that way. How did she do it? I haven't asked her yet. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. A toast? I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh.
Why are you so put off by psychology? If it weren't for my aunt, I'd be dead right now. Explain. Is your cell on, Ed? Yes. What's the date on the screen? October 8th. You bought it at an auction, right? Who had it belong to? The first American flapper, as F. Scott put it. Zelda Fitzgerald? And her husband? I'm sure you know they both ended up in psychiatric treatment. He was an alcoholic. He had died of tuberculosis. She had schizophrenia and died in a fire at the insane asylum. Got it. Thank you. All good? <laughs> As I was saying, you have no idea how sorry I am that this didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I had to give it a try. So you did it. I'm cured. <laughs> I'm not going to cure you. You are. <laughs> we'll continue this later. Get some rest? The smile of the nurse that tore you from your mother's arms. Your first lover. Sleepless in an unknown house. In an unknown bed. Staring at an unknown body. Spiders lining up to dive into your empty mouth. All of your TV sets aching to be turned on again. A roach scratching its belly with the bristles of your toothbrush. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good tickle? And then, you hear? <gasps> Doctor! How long have you been here? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Who's the poem by? Oh gosh. I like to come up with verses while I work. Oh, so then this is where Ed gets it from. Or from my brother, his father. It runs in the family. Where is his father? Hmm. Where did I put the sauce? Oh, it's right over there. I'll get it. Oh, don't be silly. Ed.
Eddie loves three bean chili. He used to ask me to make it all the time when he was little. What about his parents? Care to eat lunch with me? I usually eat with Ed upstairs, but it's no big deal if he eats alone for once. Besides, I made enough chili to feed an army. I appreciate it, but my stomach and spicy food don't really get along. I think I might need a little fresh air to take a break and maybe uh, organize some of my notes. You should check out the dock. Plenty of sun at this time of day. I'll make you a sandwich. What do you think about Ed? He's a little stubborn, isn't he? Will he walk soon? He's not giving me much to work with. Well, I guess he should just focus on doing his exercises, right? What exercises? Ham, cheese, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise? Yes, but can we hold the ham, cheese, and mayonnaise? Well, if I was able to help him last time, I'm sure a doctor like you will manage. Help him with what exactly? Vertigo. Vertigo? Oh, let me tell you, Eddie was never afraid of heights as a child. No pirate captain ever is. You see that tree? The one with the deck chair? There used to be a little tree house in it. Ed would spend hours on end up there. My brother built it for him. Then Eddie turned it into his very own pirate ship. It was all he could talk about. Pirate this, pirate that. He was obsessed with pirates ever since I got him a book by Salgari. And with his love of pirates came a love of reading, too. And see, that's where the writing began. Mystery solved. I don't mean to pry, but... What are you leaving Off after? you go then, Doctor. Or you might not have time to eat your sandwich.
Ed is reluctant and even hostile towards therapy. Why? Claire is hiding something, and it is somehow causing Ed to keep his guard up with me. Hmm, I've never seen such an intense case of vertigo before. He's not the first writer I've known to exaggerate his symptoms. To get attention, make people feel sorry for him, make it more realistic in his mind, which is so used to fiction. Does she exist? There are too many details, little things that somehow make sense. Faye exists, or existed. What about that earlier Vertigo episode? And his parents? Something happened in his childhood. But Claire isn't going to tell me. Maybe Robert? Or Ed himself, if I can break through this wall he's put up. I'll have to give it a try. The number you are trying to reach is currently unavailable. Who am I speaking to? Dr. Lomas? Who is this? Uh, it's Sheriff Reyes. Dr. Leonard gave me your number. How are you, Sheriff? Um, look, I don't want you to breach patient doctor confidentiality or anything, but... I mean, something comes up in your conversations with Miller. Is Ed under investigation? Is he the suspect of a crime? No, not exactly. If I understood correctly, Ed hasn't committed any crime. Well, we'll have to see about that. So, will you give me a hand? I'm not in a position to make any promises. Mm-hmm. Well, I understand, Doctor. I would settle for anything at all. Maybe someone saw something. I'm on my way to his neighbors as we speak. The Franklin? Nick, you there? Sorry, I've got to go. What is it this time, Adam? Tell me you saw my email with the slogan proposals. Yeah, great stuff, kid. Ah, I'm not sure which one I like the best. I like the sixth one. Um, yeah, uh, that one was, uh... Vote for Sheriff Reyes, the sneaky bastard who would have known there were only three slogans if he'd read the... Adam, do I have to tell your aunt and uncle you have no respect for your elders? You at the ranch yet? I'm on my way. 
Look, if anyone asks, I was working on Saturday night, okay? I skipped the monthly dinner. You know, Samuel, did you know your nephew is a sneaky bastard? <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Hey, I'll check that out once I got a signal again, okay? <laughs> <laughs>